everyone, it's Sharon here. I promised to put this video together following some Hachanda shows I did last weekend featuring this Sizzix Eileen Hull wrapped journal die. The, the die sold out so quickly when I was doing the shows on Hachanda that I only got to show one demo that I'd prepared with it. Um, and I know a couple of people on Facebook were asking about how to um, add the elastic etc because I didn't get to show any of that. So this is just a quick video where I'm literally just going to cut one from mount boards and um, show you a couple of different ways to to add the elastic and give you a few ideas for different different ways of using it. So here's the die. As you can see it's a big die. Um, this one is about 13 inches long um, so it is a bit longer than most dies. Eileen has kind of used every single um, bit of the length of this to, to create this great wraparound style. And um, this other die I've grabbed here is the passport die. Um, I just wanted to show you with that that the pages from the passport die um, are the same width as this. So they, they work perfectly as inserts for this. Now this is um, a piece of mount board. I bought a big, I think it was an A1 or A2 sheet from Hobbycraft and I quite liked this particular one because it's green on one side and cream on the other. One thing to mention, um, which you can see here, whatever side you want to be the front, you have to place face down on the die. I'm just getting rid of my uh, platform because I just need the cutting pads for this. And I want the green to be on the outside. So I've put the green face down onto the die. I'm using a Big Shot Plus here. You can use just the Big Shot, the normal Big Shot. Um, but if you're using the standard Big Shot, you do need the extended cutting plates because obviously this is quite long. So just run that through. And I'll just pop my machine out of the way. So you can see better. And as you can see, it's cut and done all the score lines for you. It's a fantastic die because that's it really. <laughs> that's all you need to do, run it through and it's ready to go. Now I don't know how well you can see, but it's got all the score lines ready for the folding so you just fold here and here and that gives you your spine and then the same with the other end. Now if you wanted this to be a standard book you could just snip off that flap um, and then it would be a bit like the passport but, but larger and you can have this, this flap that wraps around either on the front like so or the other way which gives you a, a completely flat front. So. Um, there's lots of scope with this. Also, if you cut it from, oh, here's the, sorry, I'll show you this before I ramble on about the next thing. This is the passport pages, which I've cut. So you can see they fit in perfectly. Um, the best way to slot the passport pages in, if you cut them from mount board as well, I find is just to add elastic and sort of tuck them in. But I'll, I'll, I'll show you rather than explain it. Now, there are a few different ways you can thread the elastic through. Um, have a play with it, really, because I, I've tried all different ways. Um, this is the most straightforward. And if you don't mind the elastic showing on the outside as well, which I don't actually, I quite like this look. Um, the, the most absolute simple way to thread elastic is to do each one separately, like so. Put the elastic through, um, tie it on the inside in a knot and then you can just slip your pages in. I, If I'm adding notebooks I actually quite like this this way of doing things because um, it, it's so quick and easy and as you can see I'll just slip this passport through like so and you could fit four of those in um, from mount board. If you cut them from paper you could, you could cut you could fit a lot in so that's the passport die um, pages as an insert. Another thing I like to add in are notebooks. Now these notebooks I've mentioned a few times on Facebook. You get three of these. Um, they do grey or the craft card. 
you get sets of three from Morrison's supermarket. And they're, I think they're two pounds for the three. They are a little bit too tall when you get them. So you do have to use a craft knife um, and a metal ruler to just take off a couple of centimetres off the top. But then they fit in perfectly. The width is absolutely just right. And I, I think that's a really good cheap way of putting notebooks in, depending on what you want to do with it. Now, this is the um, this is the one sample I did get to uh, to make on Hachanda. This is this is the, uh, the the journal I made. And I'll just thread through the elastic. And then go back through. This is kind of um, the same way as you would thread the journal. And I find the easiest way to do this um, for me to get this particular look is to do it in two. So I'm going to, I'm just going to work out how much elastic I need overall and then trim it. Because obviously the other end is still attached to my great big roll. So we'll go back in again now it, it's kind of similar to how you would do the journal but of course with the journal the standard journal you've only got three holes um, now this way I find it easiest to knot it here and then I do the same starting from the other side so kind of a mirror image this way you do have two knots on the inside on the two middle strands but I quite like the symmetrical look and this is a, a fairly straightforward easy way of um, lacing this die without having to kind of go back through holes um, and you end up on the outside as you can see with um, just one bit going across in each corner so it's symmetrical still. Um, if you prefer it to go through all of the holes on the outside so that you've got kind of a straight line across of the elastic um, then you just need to kind of go back on yourself um, and if you do that then it, it takes a bit of working out but you can then achieve just having one knot on the inside but really there's no right or, or wrong way to put these together so just play around with what what, what you think um, looks best. This um, appeals to me because it's quite symmetrical and I like that, but um, you know, have a play. Now I've grabbed the first book that I um, just did the one strand in because I wanted to show you um, another thing I like to add to these journals and that's to have a piece of elastic going around the outside. Very similar if you've got the journal die, the journal die already has a hole in the centre for you to add some um, wrap around tie or, or elastic this one doesn't I, I'm, I'm guessing because of the way it's designed with them um, the four pieces to the spine if you had something in the center it would be right along that crease line which wouldn't be great so it's better that you can put your own in where you want to I tend to just do it in the center of um, one of the two central spines because uh, doing it on the crease I don't think would be, um, I, I think you're in danger of the crease actually kind of tearing. So I've measured the central point and I've got a soft mat underneath just so I can push my pokey tool through and make a hole. Now the elastic I'm using today is quite thick, it's two millimetres. Um, ideally I think 1.5 millimetres is a little bit better for these. Two is great if you want to add heavy, heavy inserts and heavy books, but probably 1.5 is is enough. And also you'll find that 1.5 is easier to, to push through when you're doing things like this. You can see me here struggling because I've now got to get the second piece through the same hole. And obviously I, I only made this hole with my pokey tool, so it's it's not that big. So just it's easy enough. It just takes a bit of... Uh, bit of persuasion to go through and then once you've got that through you can just play around and work out how tight you want it you should, this is elastic so you obviously want it um, tight enough that it holds that it fits snugly so I can tighten that just a touch more 
that's about right. So then all I'm going to do is just tie a knot and keep that nice and secure. So that's how I would add um, elastic just around the outside, which I, I like this method if I'm adding notebooks because they are quite sturdy on the inside. So um, having the elastic keeps it all nice and, and snug. Now, another thing I like to add, um, and I think looks nice on this particular journal that I've um, done this kind of faux wood effect on. For this one, I'm just going to add some hemp twine. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Um, last time, I think I did it the second one from the front. This time I'll do it the one nearer the back. So the second one in from the back really doesn't matter which... which uh, of the spine pieces you choose to put your hole in and then I've got some nice grey twine which I think will look quite nice um, and again same principle but what I'm going to do with the twine is I'm going to keep it longer so that I can literally wrap it around a couple of times and then tie a bow and I've grabbed a button here because this twine is quite thin, obviously just tying a knot um, on the inside won't be enough to stop it pulling back through the hole. So if you just thread through a button, the button acts as a kind of stop and will stop the twine from, um, you know, pulling back through the hole. So I've just wrapped it around a couple of times just so I know how much of this twine I need and I've um, cut it. And now I can just thread it through thread both ends through leaving the button on the inside and once this is all done you won't really notice the button because it will be underneath the elastic and then behind whatever papers or notebooks you put inside so it's a good way of, of creating a little stopper so I'm just going to thread this through which is the only fiddly bit really um, and you can see here I'm struggling to get it through so it's a bit frayed at the end, so I just need to snip it. And then that should go through a little bit easier. The tricky bit, obviously, is putting the second piece through because once, like before, when you've got one piece through, it's always a bit fiddly to then get the second piece in. But one little trick I have learned is to add a bit of PVA glue to the end. And that um, makes it a bit easier to thread through. It kind of makes it harder. You can always snip that piece off once you've got it through, but that um, definitely makes it easier to thread. So once you've got both pieces through, you can kind of play around with it so that you've got one, one piece longer than the other. So one piece can wrap around twice and the other just goes along the front and then you can tie a bow at the side. Um, I'm just playing around with it here to to move, move it along a little bit on one end. So that's another another way of, of creating, um, a way of closing it. And that's better now, that's just right. So I can wrap that around and tie it. So I'm just quickly tying a bow at the side. And I realise this isn't sitting very well because I haven't put any inserts in. So off camera, I've quickly put in some of those notebooks because then you can get a better idea of, of the finished the finished journal. I think adding hemp twine is one of my favourites because I do like the look of it wrapped around a couple of times. And of course, um, if you're like me, you've probably got quite a few different colours of twine. So it's something you've probably already got. So we've done one with elastic, one with twine. And I just wanted to... I've grabbed just this spare one just to show you about the, the front cover as well. If you wrap it around this way, another good thing is to add, you could add like a brad here and then one on the other side like so. And you could wrap some cord around the two to sort of um, give another type of closure. Or any sort of um, nice metal embellishments you've got, that, that would give a nice look too. So have a play really because the design of this... Um, you know, you can use it in so many different ways. And I, I really like the the fact that this is a bit thicker. You can put a lot inside this journal. So I think it's a really cool design. 
I hope that's given you a couple of ideas to get you started with this die. But really, there are so many different ways you can you can use it. One place to definitely check out for inspiration is Eileen Hull has a Facebook group called the Eileen Hull Fan Club. If you pop over there, you will find so much inspiration. I would highly recommend doing that. I'll put details in the description box on YouTube of um, some of the things I've used in this video. And hopefully I will see you soon. I'm sure I'll be back with another video very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.